Howdy. We're going to go ahead and get started pretty soon. So it looks like most of you all have managed to find the food. Did a toucan Sam there, so excellent. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of announcements. We're going to have uh, Robert Half, tier point. We're going to make some announcements, and then we're going to get started. We're going to do it in that order. Uh, so firstly, Robert Half, here's Danielle. Hello, um, I'm Danielle. Uh, like you said, Robert Half. If you guys aren't familiar with us, uh, we do specialized uh, recruiting and staffing. So if you guys are looking for a job or if you know somebody who is, we've got an awesome team that would be able to help you out. Um, come find Lauren or myself afterwards. Uh, or obviously, if you guys need help on your team, you can uh, come talk to us as well. Awesome. Uh, so this next announcement is for TierPoint. This is uh, Bobby Bailey. They are our user group hero for the month. Uh, I have nothing but nice things to say about Bobby. I've known her for a very long time, so I will pass the mic. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, so TierPoint, we have uh, data centers, 42 data centers across the United States, as well as uh, handle um, disaster recovery as a service, cloud services, both public and private. Um, we have two data centers here in Oklahoma City, and we have one in Tulsa, getting ready to be two. It's going up right now. So. Um, I know most everybody, you know, uses cloud services now versus traditional data centers, but we have both, so we can handle everything. And uh, we're donating some, some money to Techlahoma and to help support everybody in the Oklahoma City tech community. We always appreciate that. So thank you guys. Very cool to see more cloud presence. Do, do any, how many of you use cloud for your back end right now? I use it on like a ton of projects. Uh, he does, he does. Yeah, like... Uh, there's GraphQL offerings, all kinds of stuff, so that's a, that's a big deal. So here is, uh, I want to make sure I cover everything. So, Thunder Plan Space. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we want to thank all of our volunteers. Uh, we've got John in the back uh, doing the streaming. We often have Ava doing it. So the streams, if you don't know this, we have, I checked YouTube, we have over 30,000 views right now on YouTube on our channel, and we're about to get a lot more because we've got about 15 videos in the backlog that we're going to be publishing here in just a little bit. Um, so, if you don't know who Techlahoma is, uh, if this is your first time, we're a nonprofit volunteer run organization. We currently have 33 groups, uh, two conferences, and we're going to tell you about one of those. Uh, and we sponsor free local events, and we do this to support the grassroots tech uh, community of Oklahoma. Uh, so, uh, our user group hero is supporting that, and so we're very thankful to have them here today. Uh, so, and they have a, they have a, they have a booth. Back with some notepads and other stuff if you want to go. Okay, um, so Thunder Plains. So real quick, how many of y'all have gone to Thunder Plains before by show of hands? Almost everyone. Okay, how many of you have bought a ticket already? Okay, if you've bought a ticket already, I have a treat for you. It is on the tier point desk back there. It is a sticker. You can either get our new emblem, which is a lightning bolt designed by Ava, uh, or you can get uh, the, just the Thunder Plains logo with the traditional lightning bolt. Looks really good on your laptop. Uh, so go back and grab a sticker if you've already got a, got a ticket. If you don't have a ticket, oh man, get a ticket. You're in for a treat. Um, okay, of everyone who has been to Thunder Plains before. Oh, and, the, and the new shirts will have the new logo. It'll be really cool. Yeah, they're, it's, it's a cool logo. It's, I like it. Uh, this is the old logo. I'm wearing last year's shirt. I actually had uh, the 2013 shirt. This is going to be our fifth Thunder Plains. And I thought about wearing that. And I was like, well, that one's, that's my precious. So I'm going to leave that in the closet. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, so... Uh, so, get a ticket, check it out, uh, uh, thunderplainsconf.com is November, the place to go. November 3rd, if you want to sponsor that too, we are looking for more sponsors still, so if your company wants to sponsor, that's right. That's a good way. Okay, uh, so Starspace 40 cents, uh, uh, 46, uh, the event center is donated by Starspace 46. Uh, Techlahoma's worked to, you know, get a lot of the gear in here, and the reason we have this space is because of the collaboration between Techlahoma and Starspace. And if you were, if we were in Tulsa, we have the same sort of arrangement with 36 degrees north up there. That we are very thankful that folks in the community are trying to support us and make sure we have a place to meet. Uh, so, uh, finally, the annual campaign. Uh, so, every year we run an annual campaign to support uh, Techlahoma. Uh, basically, it helps us have more groups, more resources. You know, things like the streaming setup were, uh, you know, purchased with the annual campaign money. Uh, so, what's happening right now? And you can go to donate.techlahoma.org. And actually, this uh, this Techlahoma founding member jacket was from. I was a supporter myself last year, and this is the, the thing that I got for it. Uh, so, go check it out. Uh, and we could definitely use your support for that. And One more thing, uh, if. You don't, on the annual campaign, if you donated last year, um, it is not a recurring donation. So 
Uh, some people were confused. They thought their donation last year might recur. It will not. So it's something you need to choose to do every year if you want to continue to support us. And we would appreciate your continued support. It helps us do things like this every month. Uh, one last thing. Uh, so I probably mentioned the uh, YouTube channel and Twitch and stuff like that. We stream all of our meetups now. We've been getting a lot of sort of traction there. Um, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to our channel, and it basically helps us out. We're working in partnership with Amazon Prime right now to make sure we can uh, continue to do that. So, yeah, we get a small donation from Amazon if you do that. Yeah, that's the Amazon Smile program. If you're not familiar, smile.amazon.com and search for Techloma Foundation. Anything you buy through there, normal price, it just gives us a little bit of it. What'd you say? Yeah. Also on the donations, you guys have that monthly rapid donations as well. Yeah, we do. Uh, this year, yeah, thank you. This year we have monthly donations in addition to the annual ones. So uh, lots of options there if you can't afford to do a, a bulk uh, annual campaign. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, that's all. Uh, Ryan? Okay, so I was going to introduce uh, what he's about to talk about is very important to us. Uh, we work in CLI tools all the time. How many of you have used a CLI tool in JavaScript, like Yeoman or Ember? Ever wondered how they work? We had a lot of questions about this at our last lightning talks, and this guy is going to lift the veil of mystery and show you how it do. Ryan. How's it going? Also, my seat is open, as I will not be needing it. Disregard, that's my push to talk, and it's like, as a remote engineer, it's like second nature when I start talking, I always push my push to talk, fun, fun fact. <laughs> Which is good, because that kind of helps get out, like, I'm always like a little bit nervous before I get started, but anyways, I'm Ryan, uh, I'm a dad, I like building things, uh, I work at a company, we're hiring like all the other companies, so if you need a do job, talk to me or somebody, I don't know. Um, so my goal for the talk today is I want to inform and demystify CLI enough that you feel encouraged and empowered, hopefully to make something dumb, but maybe useful. I don't know. Um, so CLI, that's like a really big, like scary word. What does it mean? It's a command line interface, which is simply a program controlled by text input. Um, so like programs have users, which via input cause reactions. As programmers, these are what we make. Um, so like, for example, if you're making a game, your user could be player one, your input could be spacebar, and the reaction is your user jumps. Uh, if you have like a word processor, your user could be a student, input could be a keyboard and you write, or like an API is another example, application programmer interface. This is where it gets interesting. Your user is another program. Um, your input could be like a network request and your reaction could be like returning a network request with likes. And so kind of like thinking about that, a CLI is simply an executable file where the user tends to be your terminal or a terminal. Uh, the input is text and you can do literally anything with it and that's why it's fun. Um, so here's a quick example to kind of um, solidify that. Here's a GUI for our file system. This is pretty familiar to us. Um, so like we initially see a lot of options for things we could do. We can drag things, we can right click on things and it has like other actions we can take. So uh, there's actually a command line interface to this too and it looks like this. It's a little bit like daunting when you first see like a blank screen with a cursor staring at you. Um, but you can do all the same things. And so like um, a really easy example is LS. So and if you want to know more about like command line Unixy stuff, I recommend this. Uh, it's by Michael Hartle. I've learned most of my programming stuff from him, so it costs a, a few bucks, but it's totally worth it. Um, so like inside the terminal, we simply type commands here. My prompt looks a little bit scary because I'm a nerd. I don't know, uh, but we're just gonna like type where the cursor is. So our program for this example is gonna be ls. Our user is gonna be our terminal. Our input is gonna be ls and it lists files. Um, so what do, we would expect to see images, index, HTML, main.js, package.json. Uh, and it does. Why on the earth, why, why would we wanna do this? So like this is very complicated to list files. Like we have this nice GUI that does it for us. Um, well, there's some answers to that. Uh, this leaves a lot of unanswered questions. Who created these files? When were they created at? 
uh, what, like, if we want to interact with them in any complicated way, it's not very obvious, or it's not, not always possible. And so what the CLI gives us is a way to do very expressive things, programmatic things. We can configure our programs to do things we want, and we can also compose programs into, like, longer programs. So, like, when I say compose, I mean, like, we have sentences made of words. It's like you can use different words to create a whole meaning, whereas on the GUI, that's not possible. It's like what you see is what you get. So let's, let's see how this works. So when I say expressive, like LS, if we want to like color code them just like the GUI had, like where the folder was blue, we can pass a flag. Uh, if we want each one on one line, uh, that's just another argument. Um, unlike the GUI, we want to see like all of the files in this like in the subdirectories, we can pass another flag. Um, if we want to see like the status of them and color codes, like we can do a lot of things with just this CLI. And so already we're starting to see like things that we couldn't do with the GUI. Um, another thing is it's programmable. This is a really dumb example, but it was late and I wanted to have this in here. <laughs> so like if we wanted to see, like here's the LS command with an interjected who am I? So we can dynamically like list our home directory. Like obviously we could use the tilde, but like this is just showing like we can like do all kinds of like dynamic stuff with GUI stuff or CLI stuff as well. Uh, configurable. So like if you want to just do really dumb things every time you type ls, it's just a dot file away. Um, it's also composable. So here's like the big lightning bulb moment for me with CLI. So. And this is definitely a contrived example, but if we want to show the contents of the last file modified in the current directory, that's like strictly impossible with um, the GUI without like a lot of steps. You have to like go click on every file, figure out when it's last modified, or switch to a different view and like open it. It's like you have to click and like peck around, but if we wanted to automate this, here it is. It's really ugly and scary, but we're gonna go through it. Um, so we're gonna list the files, uh, one on a line, uh, ordered by um, last modified with a slash after directory. And so that's what we get. We're going to then filter by, we're going to filter out any directories because we don't care about those. And so now we're down to showing three files. Now we're going to only show the first result. And so we see package JSON was the last thing I edited because I probably forgot to put my uh, repo URL in there. And then we are going to execute with the last input, the command cat, which lists out the file contents. So if for some reason we wanted this command, there it is, and we could save it under one alias. And that's like pretty awesome if you think about it. Like this is a really dumb example, but you could do this to like, um, like automate something, like show me all of my 400s, or all like my 400s on the server and do something with them. Like that's a lot for just a little bit of text. Like, it's like we're doing real programming. Um, speaking of real programming, let's make a CLI real quick. Um, so our goals for our CLI, we need it to be executable. So like when we type in the file, it needs to like execute. We want it to be configurable. If there are errors, we want to handle them and we want to kind of go over docs. And like every other meetup talker before me, probably forever, I didn't have time to do the tests. <laughs> um, how convenient, right? Um, but you should totally test these things out. It's not as bad as it sounds, but I wasn't getting paid to do this, so I didn't. <laughs> um, so we're going to make something called get told. Uh, this was motivi motivated when I was working at this. I was at the coffee shop, and somebody was watching YouTube videos on their phone. And again, I love people, but that's really annoying to me. <laughs> like, put your headphones in. So I was like, what could I do that would be equally as annoying? And it's like, every time <laughs> I do something in Git, I want my computer to narrate what I'm doing. <laughs> and so that was like, a, that's the premise of this talk. Um, and so that's like the CLI I want to do. Node is actually really great for this because it is event, it has an event loop and it's event driven. So we're not going to waste a ton of CPU if we're just sitting and waiting for something to happen. Um, and anyways, the code's pretty easy. So our first step is we just need to make like a, a version of this program that works. Um, so we're gonna go like do the like new project dance, make the folder, npm in it, get in it, and make our initial commit. Um, I know I'm going through this fast. If later you're like, please show me how to get started with 
NPM like making new packages, happy to go through that. Please hit me up on Twitter. Um, and then so like as I did this, I was like, I'm just going to dumbly explore and figure out if we can use something to figure out when we're switch branches. Like that's going to be the first command I'm going to. Every time I switch branch, I want it to say something like switch to master. Um, so like I poked through this scary file called .git. Uh, it's basically the persistence layer of all of your Git stuff. That's not GitHub. Um, and I found this one file called head. And I know from my Git experience, like this gets updated when I switch branches. Cool. So for the first version of this, I'm just going to watch this file. And every time it changes, based on the contents of this file, I'm going to like derive what we're going to say. Um, and this is in every, so every folder, so this test was the folder that had the git project. Every git project you do has this dot git folder with a head. Um, so like going to do like really happy stab at it um, and basically just say something happened every time that file changes. Um, so how many people have done like node before, not just JavaScript? Cool. Uh, so mm, a lot of people. Uh, this is this is your basic uh, FS is file system, path is path. It just comes uh, complete with Node. So if you go look at the Node docs, we can like all these things we get for free when we use Node. So we're gonna watch this um, like dot get head. That that let head is just the path for our head. That reference I was showing you right here. We are going to watch it. Anytime it changes, we're just gonna log something happen, and. So in this GIF, um, I notice when we touch the file, no, come on, you know, should have done my slides in JavaScript, just kidding. Um, um, every time we touch the file, we see like it's logging it out. Um, but I notice when we did actual things with Git, um, Git actually like, renames or replaces if something happens to the file and basically we lose our reference to it and it didn't work. So this shattered my dream of trying to do it in pure node. So I did what every good JavaScript programmer does because went to MPM, found something that solved all of these like file watching problems for me called gaze and installed it. it. Looks very similar. Basically it gives us, we can pass in a file we want to watch and every time it changes, we're going to log um, that the file has changed and that works. I don't guess I had to include that, but I wanted to like kind of make it realistic, not just like, oh, look at this, so easy. <laughs> um, so now it's working. Um, and this is kind of like, if this was a cooking show, this is where I'd be like, all right, now we're gonna take the things we mix together and we'll stick it in the oven and, oh, working program. <laughs> um, <laughs> and again, this is not really the point of the talk, so we'll just go quickly through this. I just wanted to like demystify. Um, Really, we're doing the same thing. We're just reading that file with some default node um, AP, or node utilities we have. Every time it changes, um, if the, the only scary function in here is branch name from head. Basically, if you think about the file, we just grab that last word on the end, and it's the branch name. So we have this magical function called say. So every time the file changes, if you look on line 20, should have had a laser clicker, oh well. Um, Every time it changes, we've like proved that we detected that and we're passing it to this function say, which um, is just using the OSX say executable. Uh, again, if we're like expanding to different operating systems, we'd have to like solve some problems here, but it's okay. We're gonna like suspend your disbelief for a second and just use uh, the OSX stuff. So basically, this is just a function we can call it say and we can pass it some information and it translates it to a sentence. Um, cool. So it's working, it tra tracks branches, it says something when we switch branches. This is like what we wanted, but um, it's not executable anywhere. We have to do like node index.js for it to run. So now we've just made a node script, cool. Um, well, that brings us to the next point, make it executable. And this part, um, so like I spent most of my time doing that and making a CLI tool actually took very little time. That's kind of one of the takeaways I want for this to be. Like you have a bunch of node scripts, it's very easy to turn them into CLI. Um, it's basically a matter of solving the problem of like distributing and installing, which node has really good tools to do. 
So kind of the way we're gonna, or the way we're going to do this, uh, we're going to make a folder called bin, which is like a good place to put executables. I guess it's like a Unix thing. Um, somebody smarter than me can tell you. Um, we're going to we're going to make our executable, which is just going to consume our index and and call it. We're going to do chmod plus x against our executable file. This may this is basically saying, hey, OSX, this file is actually a program, not just some text. Um, and then we are going to I don't know why I put that, whatever. Okay, so the, this is real magic. We're gonna update our package JSON with this magic thing that's bin and then points to the executable file. This basically is the hook that NPM needs to do a bunch of stuff to make your program executable. So really, this is the only thing required that we had to do to make this like a CLI tool. And I'll show you, now we can do npm install dash g dot if we're in that directory, but if we publish it on npm, it's like npm install dash g get told um, and run it anywhere, which is really cool. Except for one bug, which I'll bring up. Uh, when I initially made this, I, I was using the dir name to derive the path where I just need to switch it out to current working directory. I was too lazy to update the other pictures I took. Um, so here is the working version of it. Branch master. Switch to branch update W O O T R I C two. Switch to branch master. It's really cool, but <laughs> one voice is nowhere near annoying enough. So <laughs> we need to make it configurable so we can do different voices. Um, this is where, uh, and again, there's a lot of options here. There's this really cool uh, one called Yargs. It's basically an abstraction layer over taking the program, like when you type it in, converting all these flags and magical things you put in, and it's like, I'll just show you, it's easier. <laughs> um, basically, we can say option voice, give it an alias and describe it, and this means like now we can do get told dash v equals and then like choose a different voice. Um, and so again, in less than 20 lines of code, we have a configure, configured CLI tool. And I did like just a few lines internally to support like sw switching out the voices. Um, and this is like my favorite thing in the world. There's this voice called bad news. So now if we do get told dash dash voice bad news. News switch to branch update double. People in the coffee shop loved it. <laughs> um, and so just like a couple like responsible things for wrapping this up real quick. Um, errors happen. Like let's just think like this is a really naive approach to this. Let's just think about things that go wrong. First of all, I installed three gigs of voices on my computer to like test out which ones were most hilarious. Most people are probably not going to do that. So they'll get an error if they run with like weird voices. Um, other possible errors, what if we don't run this in a Git repo? Um, what if the OS is not OS X? I haven't tested it on Windows. I know that there's like a narration thing there, but we don't have, we don't haven't tested it at all. So there's likely gonna be some issues that crop up. And um, I'm just gonna show you how to handle that real quick. The easiest one and quickest one was just like not running in a Git repo. Currently, if we do this, it's just gonna like sit there and be like, everything's cool. And then nothing will ever happen, which would be really frustrating if you're a user. That's another thing, your users for CLI tools tend to be a bit more abrasive than like your casual Angry Birds user. <laughs> so like if things just flat out don't work, it's like a much bigger deal in my experience. I could be wrong. Anyways, so we're gonna install a logging thing that's gonna allow us to kind of like print out some error messages and stuff. And um, here is like the little hook we're, we're gonna do. So basically, if we're trying to read the head and we don't find it, we're just gonna be like, hey man, or woman, or person, gets, this isn't a git repo, can you please double check that you're running this in a git repo? And so now, if we try to run git told on my desktop, which is not a git repo, thankfully, um, it, will, it will show us an error. Um, error handled. Uh, just uh, note, if you look here, I'm doing process.exit1. If you're making things composable, you have to return error codes to let, let the OS know that this, this command uh, passed or failed. And so 
the long ver or the short version of this is uh, zero means it passed, one means it failed. Um, and then docs, uh, thankfully, or the best docs, we're gonna have a good readme, a good man page, and some usage hints. So like when you do man with the command on any Unix command, you have this like interactive thing that comes up that nobody ever reads. Like um, also like on your GitHub repo, you should have good docs. Uh, PM2 is a good example of this. Like you can go into it and go from like, I know nothing about this to like, I still know very little about this, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, and then usage hints, like if I do ls dash dash get rich, it's like, hey, that's an illegal option. Uh, you're probably gonna do something illicit to do that, so try these instead. Um, so like the great thing with YARGs, which we use to, to abstract some of this like CLI-ness away from us having to do it manually, we have help pages built in. So here you can see uh, dash dash voice, dash v, and we can see like a little bit of docs that we can like choose our voice, which again, we should definitely expand this. But this was just proof of concept. Please go build dumb things or smart things. I would love to help you. If you have any questions, please let me know. CLI is so much fun. I hope this is like, at least give, gave you some like encouragement for like, if he can build this and it's that dumb, surely my idea is not that <laughs> terrible. Um, yeah, anyways. Have you mentioned any uh, TTY so interactive kernel? Um, ha yet? Have I messed with TTY, which would be interactive terminal? So, my absolute favorite um, CLI that I've ever made is called dport because, like, I always had to look up the command to, like, clear port 3000 or something. So, I can do. 4200 and it will like confirm and kind of tell me what I'm killing before I just crash something critical. Um, so yes, YARGS is great for helping this. There's another one, Commander, which I actually use for this. So like don't do this by yourself. Go get tools to help you like build them things interactively. So here you can see like my server crashed, which is what I wanted. Uh, but yes, it's totally a lot easier than you would think. Please trust me. Um, well, we had PM2, which is like this really crazy but awesome thing that basically you can manage a lot of like other micro services running more like automatically. Uh, that was really cool. Um, uh, at least one person, John Mosesman, said Git, which I thought was obvious but also accurate. <laughs> um, but again, it, it's the, I think the takeaway from that question was how many different programmers have opinions on CLI they like. It's like how ingrained they are into people's like everyday development practices. Um, any other questions, comments, heckles? Okay, I think we're good.